Hi everyone, uh, I figured I would do a demonstration of Packet Tracer for the CCNA courses that will be present in this YouTube channel as uh, video, lecture, video lecture series. Uh, my name is Joachim Sjöverestad from the University of Skövde. If you want to read more about me or what we do or apply to our networking program, go to www.his.se slash NSA. So let's begin with have a little look at Packet Tracer, which is a very nice networking simulation tool from Cisco that is widely used within the Cisco networking courses. Uh, and basically, what it allows you to do is building nice network topologies, simulate network network traffic, and do all of that without necessarily having access to physical hardware. So. Uh, as such, it's a nice tool to train on different protocols and different techniques that are part of the CCNA and CCMP courses, I guess. Uh, and it's also a very nice way to, well, just try building networks, try how, try out how things, different protocols work together and such. Um, something that I noticed is that students are usually not that good about at utilizing the full capabilities of Packet Tracer, so I figured we'll just go do a quick look on the most important and most commonly used areas, and we'll also look a little bit about, uh, at some Cisco iOS tips and tricks. So, beginning is the area down here in the left down area of Packet Tracer. This is where we have our different devices, and if you click around here you see that there are uh, loads of different devices built into Packet Tracer. So for this little demonstration I'm going to grab myself a router and you'll see that there is a multitude of different routers when I don't need any specific things I usually just go with one, one of those that are called generic ones and if I want one just go and drag it out into the large white area and now we have a router to work with. So now we're on uh, the topic of router, I just want to show you that with uh, within Packet Tracer everything is simulated to a degree that sometimes feels a little bit silly. So for almost any device you'll have uh, a different number of tabs. So here we have physical which shows the physical outline of the device. Uh, as you can see there is even a power button right here so we can actually turn the device on and off if we like. And then we have a config tab which you should most of the time avoid using. Okay, we have to wait for it to boot, which is a f nice uh, time to, uh, for me to show you the fast forward time um, thingy with, uh, within Packet Tracer. So you see here that we have a clock running, which it shows us how long we've been into this Packet Tracer instance. If we want to, we can fast forward the time, and what happens then is that everything that is simulated, in this case the boot process of the router, is happening much faster. Uh, so now we don't have to wait for the router to start, and we can just go into the config tab. This is uh, this is an interface where you can do a lot of things graphically. Uh, I would advise not using that because any CCNA course is uh, performed using the command line interface, which is in, in another tab. So doing the doing things from the config interface is usually uh, well, just cheating yourself. However, there is one nice feature with this. If you look in the box right here, you can see that whenever I click around the uh, or write something, okay, that's not correct, uh, whatever I do, the equivalent iOS commands are displayed down here, and that allows for a very nice thing. So if I go into config mode, I can set a password like enable secret, and yes, I'm just setting something. And now, if I go back all the way to the start, and I do enable, and now I have to input a password, which I forgot, then I can do a little sheet, which is going to the config mode, and I click somewhere, and since it will input the equivalent iOS commands, I can go back into the CLI, uh, CLI mode, and it will be, uh, and I will be positioned where I was in the config mode, allowing me to go to uh, config mode and do no enable secret to remove the password. And now if I go all the way back, uh, there is no password anymore. So that's a nice cheat way to remove the password. Okay, so that's it for the router. Uh, one thing to remember is that you can add interfaces to the router. So if you see in this, uh, 
on the router here, there are two fast ethernet interfaces, there are two serials, but if we want another uh, fast ethernet interface, we can just go find one uh, in the module pane here to the left, and we can drag it into the router, but we cannot do it when the router is powered on, that's the hard simulation thing, so we'll have to turn it off, and then we can drag the new interface card in, and then we can turn it on again. So we can really simulate anything we will we would like to do, including adding more interfaces to a router. So, now that's done, I'm just going to go to end devices down here to grab myself a computer to show you that you can do that, and then we want to cable those together, and the little lightning bolt here is the, for connections, and you can see that there are all kinds of connections. Um, either you can actually use the bolt in here, and then you'll get uh, make packet tracer automatically choose the connection type, but um, mo recommended is of course to you to do use the correct uh, cable type on your own for be for practice. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of other things here. If you, we go to the top right pane, the default view is to have this select option where we can just grab things and move them around. There is also the little one that looks like a note where we can place a note. And magnifying glass, we can draw circles if we want to. Um, and the X, which is for delete. So, delete, click something, like in this case the cable, and delete. So that's it. Now, before I'm going to show you how you can actually simulate network traffic and do pings and that sort of things, we have to do some initial configuration. So, let's get ourselves a crossover cable to connect around the PC with the router and then we're going to do some initial configuration so we're ha we have to set an IP address for the PC let's go with one, uh, 192.168.1.100 and we'll do one, one as the default gateway and remember that to do that for a router uh, so now we're going to configure the same on the router. First thing I need to know is what router port did I put the cable in and if I just hover, hover over the little red balls here you will see that packet tracer is going to display where the cable is connected. It should. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just grab it and we put it into fast ethernet server. Usually when you hover over the little red lamps here, you see where the cable is connected. Apparently not now. Now I'm sure I lost my IP address. No, I didn't. Okay, let's go into the router. And just real quickly, uh, remember that when you boot a router without configuration, you get asked if you want to do the configuration dialog. The answer is always no, because it asks you to do a lot of... Uh, it asks you a number of questions about uh, why... Uh, wide area network interface and stuff like that and then does a lot of auto configuration. So we're in use, user executive mode, do enable to get to privilege executive modes, we can do all sort of show commands, uh, configuration terminal to actually do some configuration. While we're here I want to show you one thing, uh, usually when you do something you want to do show run or show something to see that what you configured actually got stuck, right? But we can't do show command in a configuration terminal. However, if we do put the a do command in front of the show run, then it actually works. So if you want to do show commands from configuration terminal or from any, uh, com uh, any mode within the router, you have to do first. So do show run do show IP int brief. Yeah. So now we're going to configure an IP address so we can actually ping to the to the computer and then we do interface fast ethernet 00, zero right? IP address 192.168.1.100 subnet mask and since all router interfaces are always shut down by default we do no shut and uh, did a mistake because it's going to be one on this device. So like that. Now the state changed to up, but we still want, still want to see that it works. So we do go do show IP int brief, and then we can see 
that our fast ethernet zero server is up up and we should also be uh, able to ping the uh, ping the client and ping is a privileged executive mode command but we can do it with do so we go do ping 192.168.1100 and we wait for a little bit the first ping always fails and that is because packet tracer actually simulates um, the ARP request and the ARP process that is being being run and that makes uh, that makes the first ping that is sent timeout. Now it all fails, and that is a little bit weird, but I'm guessing that maybe we lost the configuration on the PC. Yes. And the reason that I did lost it was because I misconfigured, when I misconfigured the router to be 1100, then we got a duplicate IP address, and Packet Tracer automatically removes the IP address from the client. So now it's back there. And we go into the router again, we do the ping, and we're going to see that it works. Yes, it does. And as you, as you saw now, the first ping failed. So when we ping, the output is usually either a dot or an exclamation mark. The dot means that it failed, and the exclamation point marks success. So in Packet Tracer, there is a quick way to do the ping. Uh, when you have like a large network and want to test connectivity, uh, you can use the little envelope here to the side and you just press the envelope press a device and press another device and there will be a ping sent between those two if you want to see the result which you most likely do you go to the uh, to the little arrow down here and press it out and you will see a listing of the pings that you sent uh, you can also do a more advanced uh, packet if you want to send something a little bit more advanced to maybe test a, a firewall or an access control list or whatever you can choose to do a DNS query you can choose to do a HTTP query and so on and so forth uh, I'm not going to go through that right now but what I do want to show you is that what we've been in so far is the real-time mode where we can where time is running as it should, one second is one second and so forth and we can do a little ping and we can see the result of it however there's also a simulation mode so if you put what I think looks like a little robot up here we go into simulation mode and oh, let's see if the if I can do this work so that, that view works for us so uh, in the simulation mode now if I send a packet, I, I'm doing it with a little envelope. Now, nothing's going to happen until I press the play button that appeared here. This one. Uh, or, or auto capture play. And when I do that, what is going to happen is that we will see how the packet, um, the packet, the envelope flows in the network. And you can see that now in this scenario it's not very interesting because it's going to go to the PC and then it's going to go back. Um, and well, while this is not, you can see that I also have the play controls here, so I do auto capture play and you see that it's, it gets sent back and it's successful. Uh, this may not be that very useful when we're doing a ping between two devices, but when we are uh, configuring a large network, we do some access control lists and we do more things. Uh, it can actually be quite useful to follow a package through the network, especially when something is not working, because we can see exactly where it dies, uh, because it will be indicated with a red X over the package. Well, that's all for this little packet tracer demonstration. I hope you got something of value out of it. Otherwise, I'm sorry for that, but I hope I'll see you next time.